Hi there, this is Six Round Studio. My name is Bill. Today we're working on the 1905 Ithaca uh, restoration, double barrel restoration. I have a singular goal today, and that is to get the first coat of finish on this buttstock that I've been working on for, for so many months now. So the last thing that I need to do is I need to polish down the parts of the metal that are actually slightly below the wood because we're trying to get a match finish to this. And we're not talking a lot, we're talking a couple three thousandths. But I want to get the section around the inletings sort of matched to the, to the wood itself uh, so that I can get that first coat of finish on. Uh, once I've got this matched, then I'm pretty confident that I can start the final, final polishing process on this without worrying about getting uh, or mismatching or getting the metal too far below the wood. Uh, I just don't see that as a problem. So we're going we're gonna to just, right now I just want to get this, this metal where it's a slight, slight bit high taken down so that it's, a, that it's the same height or same level as the wood on the gun stock. Now I've already fit this into the stock and I know where where I'm slightly proud or slightly high and it's only about a half an inch from from this point here to the end and uh, again I, as I said we're not we're not a lot we're only a couple thousands I'm using a, a fine um, a fine file and just bringing those edges down over just a little bit. Trying to match or follow the original contour without changing it. Kind of maintaining the, uh, the original design cues uh, from, from the original manufacturer. <clears throat> then when I've got this thing mounted up, just getting it set um, just sort of looking for any any differences in the height. We've pretty much got this at this point. Um, not unhappy with that. When we do the final polishing, we're going to take a little bit more of that down. Now I've already done the trigger guard, and it is those two pieces of metal here and here that are the the match sanding for for the metal in the wood. So I've already done the um, trigger guard so that's good I'm happy with that. Last thing I want to do is just just take a little bit of uh, 100 grit paper and I want to pull out the scratch marks from the file now when I get ready to do the final polishing, I'll bring you through that process. That, that, that's a little bit different method than what I'm doing right now. Uh, right now, my only goal is, is to get the, that metal so that it matches the, uh, matches the wood best I can. Got just a little bit more on this back side that I need to need to do. We are moving such a small amount. All right, that looks really good. Let's prep this stock and get that first coat of finish on. I think you're going to like this. So before I put the first coat of finish on this, I want to tape off the checkering. Uh, now I don't want any finish down in that checkering until the very, very end. At the very end, I'm going to mix the finish with a, with a little bit of a darker color so that the checkering itself stands out against the, um, the rest of the stock. So a little time consuming to get this done, we're going to use some, some painter's tape and an X-Acto knife and just um, easily trim around the outside of the border. So to make this happen, I, I 
put a thin layer of painter's tape, uh, press down along the checkering, and then the last thing that I do is push along the edge of the border. Now, what that does is that reveals that outer border. From there, I can use my fingernail and come in and catch that border. By doing that, I then have something I can guide against to use the X-Acto knife. Not pushing particularly hard because I don't want you know, to scribe down too deep into the wood. And when we get that done, just go in All right, so I have to finish taping off. I got to tape off into into this section here and this section here. Then we'll go and do the other side. And as soon as we get this taped off, I'll bring you back and we can start putting that first coat of finish on. So that takes care of taping off the checkering. I'm mixing this up pretty thin because what I want to create is a, um, a skim coat or a base coat of finish and I want that finish um, to, to absorb uh, deep into the pores. So I've thinned this down pretty good. All right, so first coat of finishing going down. Uh, it's going to be a thin coat. Um, I want to get you know sort of a base coat, uh, um, an underlying coat, and I'll build it up and it'll help close in or seal some of the pores. It'll also have the other advantage of revealing um, some, some scuff marks, some sanding marks that I may have missed. Uh, once that dries, I'll be able to go in with sandpaper and if I did leave any um, sanding marks, I can then see them and pull them out. Now, <clears throat> my finish is my finish. There's, there's, a, there's a thousand woodworkers out there that all claim to have discovered the best way to finish and you know what they're all right every one of any every one of them has a method that works for them and they're going to tell you that this is this is the right way to finish um, and and I'm all good with that now <clears throat> if you're interested in learning my methods my philosophy on finishing head on over to my patreon page and at the five dollar level I've got a couple videos up there where I talk a little bit about finishing uh, and again you know, my thoughts on, on finishes, mixtures, whether or not, you know, you should thin, all of that stuff. So I've mounted the stock onto the receiver because I need some way for it to float while I get this finish on. And I'm not worried about getting a little bit of finish up onto the, to the receiver because I still have to polish it. So one of the things early on that we need to do is we need to get this, this finished because I've still got that forearm that I need to strip as well. And I'm going to try to blend or match the color of this as closely to that original color as I can. Uh, once I've done that, I'm, I'm never going to get an exact match, but I'm going to get it as close as I can. Once I've done that, then I'll know the formula I need for coloring the forearm because it'll blend off to the coloring formulas that I use here. And then we'll have two stocks uh, forearm and butt that closely match each other. 
uh, for color and for the final coats of finish. All right, so let's go ahead and get this, this on. Again, this is a, a really fine coat. And I can already see this is darkening up nice. This is going to be, this is pretty, <laughs> this is going to look really nice. I do not spray finishes. So for all you woodworkers that do, um, good for you. I'm not saying, again, making no comment on whether it's right or wrong. I hand rub. I just believe that that the results are a little bit striking, more striking, a little bit deeper. I'm already seeing a little bit of a, an issue right in this area right here, which is fine. That's why I do this. Rub it in with my hand, heating it up a little bit, and then I'm just going to go right behind and, and, and pull the excess off. Remember, we're trying to build thin coats. <clears throat> if I bring you back, or if you watched any of the earlier videos, you would remember my discussion about using white epoxy to glue these panels on. Uh, because I'm going to have to, to fold this in a little bit and the the white epoxy is showing a little bit on this right panel so when I get ready to add the, um, the faux finish I'll be finishing over that white epoxy and helping to blend that in Also from an earlier discussion, earlier video, we talked about how much, how much do we want to restore this? How much do we want to take away some of that original um, history, some of that original story? And by that I'm talking about the, the dings and, and some of the blemishes that are in. So the choice, my choice was to leave a little bit of that here. I've done that. And it, it's going to, it look, it's looking nice. There, there's just enough darkness or dark spots or, or uh, blemish spots that this thing, again, the idea is to make it look like a, a well-used or used but well-preserved original. And I think we've done that. Now once... I've got the finish on. I don't want to be getting my fingerprints all over it. All right, I'm going to let this sit for a couple hours, let this um, finish set up a little bit, then I'm coming back and put a second uh, first coat or a second um, base coat on. And um, then we're going to let it dry overnight. That that base coat is is all I need to 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 give me the ability to see um, see the quality of the of the work that I've done, and then from that point uh, we're going to start putting some color coats on. We'll we'll do two or three color coats, and once I've got two or three color coats on, then I'm going to go back in and, and try to fill out some of these patches and repairs that I've done, sort of blend them in. Then we'll come back in with another color coat and then we'll do multiple finish coats uh, until this thing uh, has a nice a nice uh, semi-gloss to it. All right, so I'll see you guys in a couple hours. All right, so let's finish this up. Now I filmed that previous segment two weeks ago. Now when I did it, it was in the mid 90s here in New Hampshire. <laughs> And as I'm filming this conclusion, uh, two weeks later, it's actually in the mid-50s. So welcome welcome to New Hampshire, welcome to New England. Uh, we've literally dropped almost 40 degrees in the last, <laughs> in the last two weeks. Uh, hey, it's the early September now, uh, falls right around the corner, leaves are going to start changing. Uh, this, is, this is our world, this is southwest New Hampshire, this is, this is what happens. Anyway, uh, if any of you have been following my two Instagram pages or my other uh, YouTube channel, then you know I've spent some time uh, recently out in San Diego. 
and uh, been there before, but this time I made it a point to visit some of the uh, fantastic museums they've they've got in San Diego. Uh, it's all within easy commute from from downtown where we were staying. Anyway, went to the their the San Diego Air and Space Museum. Went to their Auto Museum. Went uh, visited a few art museums. Um, it, it was really it was it was my art trip, if you will. So uh, got to see some really nice stuff. So if you're not subscribed to the other channel, head on over to Rust to Resurrection, where we talk about all things Jeeps. I actually did a short video. Uh, on or from the deck of the USS Midway looking at one of their CJ3 uh, aircraft tugs. Uh, kind of a neat little neat little uh, modification to to the old flat fender Jeeps. So anyway, if you haven't subscribed to the other channel, head on over to Rust of Resurrection on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel where we talk about all things Jeeps. As well, consider my two Instagram feeds. Uh, one is for this channel, Six Round Studio, and the other is Rust to Resurrection, again, where we talk about all things Jeeps. We finished applying the base coat of finish to this Ithaca, 1905 Ithaca double, uh, two weeks ago, and it's had plenty of time to set up to dry. Um, and what I need to do, uh, I mentioned in the video that that helps reveal some of the, some of the sandy scratches, some of the things that, that, that sometimes just doesn't show up in the light. So I've got a couple, a couple really small places where I got to go after it and get rid of the sanding scratches. So other than that, coming up on the videos, we're going to be able to do multiple projects, multiple tasks on this shotgun. Uh, now that the, now that the stock has got its base coat, I'm going to go in and start doing any of the faux finishing I need to 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 hide some of those repairs that I've done. As well, at the same time, I'm going to be able to start polishing this metal. So uh, the, any, of the, any of the artwork that I do to this stock is going to need 24 hours to, to cure. So we'll, we'll do some of that artwork and while that's curing we'll go over and we'll start polishing on the metal. So in future videos we're going to color and finish the stock. We're going to polish and color the metal. Uh, this thing is going to start to pick up pace, uh, really getting exciting here. So if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I'm trying to get to 5,000 subs by the end of the year. If you like this video or any other video that I've done, please give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you appreciate it. Comments are always appreciated. That all helps getting YouTube to share this with, with, other, with other viewers. Ring that bell so you get notified the next time I post a video. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.